Hey, thanks for joining us again today for Up the Sleeve with Steve. And I'm sitting here today with my good friend, Pastor Kent Wilson. And he is actually the guy that first taught me how to do the flying mouse balloon animal. And he does several different balloon animals. I, some of you may remember his daughter, Kelsey Wilson, who's traveled with us in the past. Uh, we called her the balloon maker extraordinaire. And uh, so I've asked Kent today just to share some things with us. Uh, about some balloon animals and why they are good to use and how you can use them to teach lessons and things of that nature. So how you doing, Kent? Doing great, Steve. Cool. The, the number one thing about balloon animals is, is that when you're in the process of creating it, uh -huh. you control everybody's attention to your hands. You don't have to say, hey, kids, pay attention to me. Hey, why don't you look over here? Even after I've created it, if I hang on to it, I can move the attention to wherever I'm going by simply moving the balloon animal oh, absolutely. and everybody wants to pay attention to it, especially if they and everybody know wants it too. and they all want it <laughs> because that is the key thing about the reason that you use it in your illustrations. If you, it doesn't actually have to be the balloon animal that is part of your lesson, but it can be a part of the application to the lesson. Uh -huh. What did the flying mouse do for you? Well, a flying mouse is absolutely the funnest balloon I've ever found. I uh, found it by accident, saw somebody making it, said, you've got to teach me how to do that. It is absolutely the funnest. It is also the fastest balloon animal that you can make. You can make a hundred of them in just a few minutes. It just is incredible. You can make them before the lesson so you can have enough for the entire group, or you can make it as a part of the lesson and it's as simple as a uh, with your pump and your uh, balloon and the one thing that you always we're going to find out whether or not this balloon you don't want to put a lot of air with it it's about three maybe four inches of the balloon is all you really want in your balloon kind of like a hot dog yes sir hot dog with the tail the tail is important do not squeeze the air into the tail you want the tail to stay uh, rigid and stiff simply this is going to be the nose so you want to make the front of the nose smaller than you make the other two pieces of the balloon then the ears you simply and as you twist the balloon any any time that you are making a balloon the segments i always go three times it assures that it doesn't get away from you you always hold the balloons in your left hand. You always twist with your right hand. And it simply brings it back to you three times. And then once you have the ears, separate those away from the nose. And that's your balloon, your flying mouse. The reason a flying mouse is, is absolutely what it talks about. When you make a circle with your index, your uh, finger and your thumb, you pull the tail. And when, when you launch it, it jumps out and it takes off. Every kid wants a flying mouse. You can take and make eyes and, and uh, eyebrows on it. You don't have to make the nose because the nose is already there from the knot that you tied. That is an incredible balloon. It can teach in many, many different lessons how fast something is going on in your Bible lesson. But there's another one that, every, that we have found that is... Uh, I have made everything from swords to flowers, but there's something about the walking dog. I've not seen it in a lot of books, but it also is the foundation for the giraffe as well. If you just simply take the head, put it on this end of your balloon, you go from a walking dog to a giraffe. So you can be making multiple balloons with the same balloon. On, on the walking dog, and the reason that kids like the walking dog is simply for one reason. They get to control where the dog goes. And in any of our lives, we want to control something. Kids are no different. <laughs> Isn't that right? Absolutely. And if you can control what this dog does, this dog barks, and you don't have to draw a face, you don't have to draw anything on it. And yes, it doesn't look, it looks goofy. But I guarantee you, you do it with... Uh, elementary age kids, they will stand in line to get the walking dog. Uh -huh. 
And so the walking dog is so very, very easy to make. Again, uh, what I didn't tell you before is anytime that you're doing anything with your balloons, these are 144 balloons, always stretch the balloon before you start to uh, put air in it. If you don't do that, you can get what, I, what happened to me a moment ago where it gets an inappropriate fill. You want to fill your balloon until about three inches remain on the end. Pinch it off. What You have to have some remaining on the end so as you make your twist that the balloon has the ability to grow that last few inches. You're going to start with the, well, again with the nose. And you can make a long nose dog, a short nose dog. Again, you're going to roll three, you're going to roll three, you're going to roll three. We already have the same thing that you made for the flying mouse as the same head you made for your walking dog. The neck, you want to make three fingers. And typically, because if you get the neck too long, it won't look like a dog. And so then the body is typically a full hand. I mean, the first leg, the legs even out. And you make the legs long, short, whatever you want to make. The body is a full hand. Don't be scared about the balloon uh, popping. If you notice, we still have a little bit on the, on the end of your balloon. And that's good because as you make the last couple of twists, that tip will disappear. And it's just as quick as that, you have the walking dog. A lot of times the legs, you want them longer. But you want to remind the, the kids with this, that as many times as the balloon touches the ground, there can be things that make it go pop. So it's not actually walking on the ground, but they're walking it in the air. And they are controlling the walking dog. It, any color will work. But one of the neat things about the walking dog is, is it teaches invaluable lessons about taking care of things, you're in control of things, the decision that you make with what you have has an outcome. So if they are banging it on the ground and it explodes, they made a decision to put it to the ground. They don't have to. We don't have to do things in our lives that have adverse effects in our life as well, the sins of our life. And so the walking dog can be applicable in any and all lessons, Steve. And I'm, it's, it's one of those that I haven't seen. Yeah. And you can make the body of the dog long, you make a, a weenie dog. Or you can make a poodle dog. I have seen, I have made it, I typically ask the kid when they, when the child, when they're asking me for a balloon animal and I say, hey, I want the walking dog. I said, do you want a, a weenie dog or do you want a poodle? And it gives them the ability to make that choice. Uh -huh. It's simply just a couple different twists yeah. in making that. And so um, those are a couple of the favorites that I make. And the other reason I like the, these, uh, these two type of balloon animals is this, is you can uh, make them very quickly. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when you're making the sword or you're making the flower, it takes a lot more time. Yes. And you can become slowed down. And you get into using two balloons and things of that nature. And it just, you know, when you, when you can make a balloon animal with just one balloon, especially in our case, sometimes we're at camps with, you know, four, five, 600 kids, and you've got a line here of 80 kids that want a balloon animal, the last thing you want is to make a balloon animal. It takes five different balloons to make it. It's like, okay, I just want to make something and get you moving on so I can get to the next person. So these are really cool and easy to make in your classrooms and have some great applications for them. And the really the interesting thing is, is that balloon making is as vast or a, it's as elementary or as, del, as intricate as you want to make it. Uh, I was sharing with some of our teenagers, one of the things that got Kelsey interested in making balloon animals is that when I started making balloon animals, I made a pink panther. Literally, it took me several hours to make and it stood over four foot tall, had complete arms. I can't remember the number of balloons in it, but every kid in the building wanted to take home the pink panther. And he made it completely out of pink balloons but what was really neat was it envisioned, they gave them uh, the ability to desire something, but also said, how do you make that? Yeah. How do you be a part of that? 
And so I encourage you, the internet is packed with uh, balloon sculpting. Uh, there are, I use a simple pump. There is everything from battery packs, uh, backpack pumps to handheld pumps to tabletop pumps that enables you. Please do not try to blow balloons up by yourself. <laughs> that takes years of experience. Yes. <laughs> your eyeballs will pop out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. And you could pass out. I have almost had that happen to me, and I've been blowing up balloons for a very long time. Um, and I'm just in a school show one time, went to blow a balloon up, and it was just a little bit hard. And the next thing I know, I'm thinking, okay, Lord, please don't let me fall on this stage. I got extremely lightheaded. <laughs> yes. So. And it will take a lot of, it, it takes a lot of air and a lot of technique and learning when the balloon is ready to receive the air. Yeah. And it, it, it can, it, it very easily make you pass out. $2.97 at Walmart and you can get a dual action pump and you want a dual action pump. You'll wear yourself out with a single action. But Absolutely. $2.97. And they are, uh, get, and just a word of advice, it will fail. Yeah. So buy two, put one up because the minute you don't think you need one is the Sunday morning that you're doing balloon animals for the kids and you got 50 kids there wanting balloon animals and your pump goes whoop, yeah. and it's gone. I tell you one of the things I do with, with uh, mine when I get them now, this joint right up here at the top, uh, I actually will get it and then take super some glue. super glue and put it around that because that's where they fail at the most. And so I just kind of strengthen it with some super glue and they'll last a lot longer then. Yes, uh, sir. Because my, my uh, interns will use them in the summertime and they'll pull it out and there's a whole handle comes off the end. And so that super glue helps to keep it on there. Yes. Yeah. I haven't done that that to this one, but I typically will glue that joint and this joint here. Uh -huh. So, but. well, alrighty. Hey, this is another episode of Up the Sleeve with Steve, and I hope you have enjoyed it. Just how to use some balloon animals. As uh, Kent said, you can find all kinds. Go to YouTube. You can find all kinds of things there of how you can make balloon animals. Intricate details. And they are fantastic to teach lessons with. I do entire lessons where we bring kids up on stage and we make balloon animals as we go through it. Simple things, but it really helps them to see. It gives them another visual, uh, as a friend of mine says, a surprise for the eyes that keeps their attention. And then you've got a prize to give away at the end of it. So uh, it's something else to keep up your sleeve, okay? It's a great thing to have. Hey, thanks for joining us today. And uh, tune in the next time for another episode of Up the Sleeve with Steve. See you then. Bye. -bye. Bye.